village, Link seeks information about a symbol haunting in his vision. His quest leads him to encounter Talon, who offers help and a horse for 100 rupees. As Link looks into his bag he only has 10 rupees, only enough for a pony ride. Talon then provides a wager, if Link can hurt his chickens in a certain time he'll give him a horse, but if he loses he'll have to give all he has and help around the ranch. As Link catches all of Talon's chickens, Talon, upset with losing, sends his daughter Malon to aid Link, who, sensing his genuine intent, guides him toward Hyrule Castle, divulging a secret entrance nestled within a tree's embrace. Meanwhile, in Hyrule Town, the vibrant aura of festivity envelops the atmosphere, signaling the grand celebration of Zelda's 15th birthday. Link strolls into the festive scene, perplexed by what he's seeing. Link queries a local salesman about the occasion, only to learn it's the fateful day of the legend, a chosen day anticipated for the princess to draw the sword within the castle. Despite the town's jubilation, Link, uninterested in the spectacle, retreats to the concealed entrance leading to the castle. Intent on unraveling the mysteries of the symbol his mother had fled from, the scene shifts to Link's determined descent through the castle's clandestine passages. Link walks into an old part of the castle that looks abandoned as he finds himself in an old library of time, picking through the endless books, coming across one with an image of his mum with her friends. Inside the throne room, anticipation swells as Zelda, now older and poised for her destiny, confronts and attempts to wield the Master Sword. The King of Hyrule and the Royal Guard stand watch as silence falls over the gathered crowd. Her efforts falter, the sword resisting her grasp, shocking onlookers and casting a shadow of uncertainty upon the eagerly awaited moment. Ganondorf's sudden uproarious laughter pierces the room, freezing everyone in place. In a horrifying turn, Ganondorf's laughter transforms into an act of treachery as he swiftly thrusts his weapon into the king's heart, silencing the room with a cruel and fatal blow. As he waited years for the power of the Master Sword only to be in vain and with a chilling declaration, he seizes the Triforce piece and commands his cohorts to raise the castle to the ground. As the monarch falls, leaving Zelda aghast, her world shattered as Ganondorf callously orders to leave Zelda to burn as he makes his way to the two other Triforce pieces held in other kingdoms. Meanwhile, Link, hearing screams and seeing fire from the castle, reacts swiftly. He pulls an old shield from the library and jumps into the window. Using Navi's fairy magic he gently glides and confronts the guards in a frenetic battle. Armed with his wooden sword, Link engages in a fierce struggle, outnumbered but resolute. In a dramatic turn, his wooden sword ignites into flames, a startling transformation that leads him to seize the Master Sword. Caught off guard, Zelda cries out in alarm, warning Link against wielding the legendary blade. Undeterred, Link draws the Master Sword, enveloped in a radiant blue light as he transforms into the prophesied Chosen One. Zelda stands bewildered, the castle engulfed in flames as Link, now empowered, unleashes a whirlwind of attacks, defeating the assailants but inadvertently propelling himself and Zelda into a rushing water stream. At Lake Hylia, a scene unfolds as a fisherman pulls both Link and Zelda from the river's depths. Curiosity brimming within her, Zelda seeks answers about Link's peculiar destiny. The sight of his burnt wooden sword weighs heavily on Link. Despite her initial resolve to go it alone, recognizes the urgency of uniting the Triforce pieces before Ganondorf's grasp tightens. With a reluctant yet determined nod, she invites Link, now equipped with the Master Sword, to join her. Their path leads them to Goron City, where an unexpected encounter occurs. As they go towards a cave, an amazing smell leads them to Gore, the king's son, who loves crafting culinary delights but is away from his father's stern demeanor. They beseech an audience with the king, a figure as unyielding as the stone he governs. Unswayed by legends, the king yearns for solace, unable to find relief. In a poignant moment, Link plays a tune, a melody long forgotten, and the king's stony visage softens, joy rekindled after ages. Despite his initial hesitation, Link tenaciously confronts a daunting trial of courage against a rock-made dragon, ultimately triumphing and securing a Triforce piece. Recognizing the looming danger of Ganondorf's approach, the king urgently urges their swift departure, seeking the assistance of his son. In a demonstration of distinctive Goron hospitality, the son adeptly curls Link and Zelda into a ball, sending them tumbling down the mountain in a surprising and unconventional mode of travel. As they descend from the mountain, Gore, admitting his aversion to water and inability to swim, opts to stay with the pone of the horse, eager to prepare a meal after the dizzying roll. Meanwhile, Zelda and Link press forward into Zora's fountain, their journey leading them to a heart-stopping plunge down a thundering waterfall. Amidst the roar of the waterfall, Zelda and Link find refuge within a cave, where the vibrant strains of rock music fill the air. 
They encounter Zora Tribe, a solitary figure immersed in his musical revelry. Through a musical mishap, Link steps in with his flute, surprising Zora and eliciting his excitement at finding a kindred spirit. King Zora, reminiscent of a bygone hero, recognizes Link's resemblance to a dear friend from the past. Link, hungry for answers, is told that tales shall be shared when the waves have settled, tasking them to acquire the Triforce piece guarded by a water dragon within the water temple. King Zora bids them haste. Link dives into the hidden temple and walks toward the water temple. As he is confronted by a water dragon protecting the Triforce piece of wisdom, he wields the Master Sword, confronting the Guardian after attacks doing no harm. Link realizes the futility in harming the solitary creature and chooses to serenade it with his flute, soothing the dragon into a restful slumber. King Zora, pressed for time, urges their departure. Unified in purpose, Link, Zelda, and Zora forge ahead, meeting Gore and Epona along the way. Zora, leaping onto Gore's back, recalls their childhood camaraderie when their parents were part of a musical band. As they grasp Ganondorf's trap, Link ascends, and they strategize to conceal the piece